Hello and welcome. This is Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie from Deliberately Creative, and I'm here to welcome you to episode four of my Doodle Gem series. This time we're going to be doing fossilized coral. And this is one version of the fossilized coral that I just did up last night shared it on Facebook and Instagram, and people were really receptive to having a video done of it. And so that's what I'm doing today. However, this is not the exact coral that I'm going to be doing today. I'm actually doing a coral that has more deep tones to it. It's a picture of an actual real piece of coral that has been fossilized and polished off into a cabochon, which is this shape right here this lovely oval type shape that's slightly domed so you get a pretty area to get some shine and you get a lot of view of what the stone actually looks like. I have already pre-drawn up a little doodle frame to share with you here and I'm going to just jump in and get started. I have not done this particular color yet before so this is sort of an experiment. I like doing that with you guys. I like experimenting on these. Uh, I get bored if I have to do the same thing, exactly the same over and over, which is why I wouldn't make a good production artist one that was required to do the same art. Now I'm doing this on uh, Nina cover stock paper that's 110 pound. And Nina is N-E-E-N-A-H, and you can find them online. I buy this on Amazon in 250 uh, sheet packs, but there are places on the internet that you can get this for just, you know, 10 sheets, 15 sheets. Uh, most of the places would be ones that would do cards or rubber stamping because these cards, or this paper makes awesome cards. What I'm doing here with my Tombow Irajitan uh, colored pencils, and this is Narcissus, which is a pale yellow, I am laying in a base coat of color just to get an underlying tone this is actually going to be showing through in the final version of the stone to a certain extent. There's little borders around. They sort of look like petals. And so you have these petals, and if you see here, there's this lighter color. That lighter color that's showing up around the edges is the color that I put on the background of this particular card. This card I used a soft gray and then went to a dark gray for the, for lack of a better word, petals on the inside here. And then there were some hits of other colors just to give it some variation as if it were reflecting colors from its environment around it. So, all right, so we're gonna get going here. I wanna do this fairly quickly. It is going to be real time. You are going to see every bit of color going on this particular jewel. It's not really a jewel and in the true sense of the word it's not really a stone. It is fossil coral. There we go. We're getting this colored in. Again, I just want a nice soft color on this. So being a fossilized stone or a fossilized creature, fossilized creatures, I think that would be more appropriate. It's more like dinosaur bones. because the fossilized coral that they're bringing in and making into pretty, pretty stones, pretty cabochons, pieces of jewelry, lovely things to, for home decoration. These creatures died 
hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years ago. And the ocean floor is populated with chunks of reefs that have died and that pieces of them have washed in ashore. All right, so now I'm done with that yellow and I am actually going to try the cherry red on here to start off with. And then I will be going and bringing in some dark gray. I may go and grab a dark, a, a blue, I think more than the gray, but I don't know. The, the, this uh, taupe is what they're calling this particular gray. It's sort of a purpley bluey gray, so I think it might work for what I want to do. Anyway, so now I'm going to lay in some of the, well, flowers. And the flowers on these are not, um, they're not necessarily symmetrical. They're not necessarily completely even. I want to lay in almost little flags of color. Like, I want to say like a long skinny hearts and I need to leave that margin between the petals and there's a lot more that's going to go on here but I'm just going to move my pencils out of the way for now so that I don't keep rattling into them and I'm just going to go around and try and get this in fairly quickly I'm not pressing really hard right now. I'm actually just very lightly putting these little flags in. I think I'm gonna go across. This is going to be the biggest of the flowers. They're not really flowers. It's the open cells between uh, clusters. But they look so much like flowers to me. And with springtime on my mind here, I am just calling them flowers. So what I've done is I've just sort of gone along and like compass points. I'm doing a few on each side and then I'll fill in those spaces between. If you want to see more pictures of actual corals that have been fossilized and cut into stones, you can do a Google search for fossilized coral, cut and polished coral. Um, that will get you, oh, several thousand hits. And then you can just go through View it under the images tab on Google. And that way you're not getting all of the other, um, unless you want them, the other more scholarly or sales type sites. There are several sites out there that will give you lots better information about what fossilized coral is, how it was formed out on Google. Google. Check them out. I'm almost done with this first pass around. And I'm going to do this on a couple different stone, uh, flowers before I move on to my next color. So we're just going to keep at it here. Put a little line. Sometimes if I make too wide of a space and I don't want to make the little petal thing bigger, I'll just drop another line in. Like a little cell that didn't open up all the way. Now part of the beauty of these particular stones is that you usually get one very central. The, it all depends on the way the person cut the, cut the rock and then polished it. 
but most of the time you'll find them with at least one main central flower and then others that are going around it and they are sometimes big and sometimes small more often the biggest one is going to be your center There's going to be some more information around the outsides of these that will be put in with the shading that will be going into the background. This is a unique stone. You don't usually find these being drawn. And so when people were asking if I really meant it, that I was going to do a video, it made me think that they really wanted to see it. So I'm hoping that if you like this video, you will click on the like button. If you want to find out when I have more videos come up, you'll go ahead and click on subscribe. And that way you'll find out, you'll get notification when my videos go up. And if you have any suggestions or you just want to leave me a comment and let me know you were here, have any suggestions on stones you'd like me to look at and try to do, I would love that. I think that's, it's nice. I love that we get to communicate that way. I love that we can communicate when you have a question or you have a comment, you can leave it in the comments. It comes right to my inbox. I don't have to physically just go looking to see if anybody's commented, although I tend to do that quite frequently. They come to my inbox. And if you have a question that needs an answer right away, I try to answer my my email frequently through the day. I do work a day job. So sometimes the my daytime, I'm in the Pacific stand, uh, Pacific daylight time right now. My daytime hours are Pacific time and I do work my day job. So I'm not necessarily going to be able to answer a, answer a question that happens during regular work hours. Sometimes I will go in and check my email during my uh, lunch break and get caught up that way. And as you see, I'm just going along and filling in these little, pretty little flowers, really. I've got two more little partials that I'm going to do. I'm not even going to show that there's a center on this one. I'm just going to be doing some edges just sort of poking up just happened to be this the way this stone got cut and polished a little spot there and then one more here let's see yep I think it's going to be just just edges again, but it might come in just a little bit farther like this. There we go. There we go. All right. So now we've got this part done and I want to go in with my dark gray and I'm going to hit the centers real close to the center of these particular little stones, uh, flower petal things. And if I had gone on and read those more scholarly papers, I would be able to tell you exactly what these bits are inside, but I didn't because I was more interested in the pretty pictures. But adding this little tiny bit of this bluey gray 
right down into the center of the points just gives it some depth. And I'm just flicking just a little bit of color in. I'm pressing a little bit harder. I'm not pressing so hard that I'm going to dent the paper and, and such, but it's, it's a little harder. I am going to go ahead and sort of make little C shapes. Not closed circles, not closed circles. Kind of like little cells. You want them to stay open a little bit. And I do want to pick up my red again because now that I've got that, I want to just drop in a little bit of that color around some of those. It gives it just sort of a sense of a sense of shape, a sense of depth and color that the whole thing belongs to its to the same creature creatures. All right. Now, around the outside edge, I am going to do little sort of little V-shapes or little diamond shapes in the, in the space of the hearts or just little scribbles, maybe just little scribbles, just sort of scribbles that's, that are reaching out. I'm not having it actually touch the, the petal. There's, let's see if I can show you here. There's space between, there's space between the petal and this darker spot. Like a little wall. There's like a little wall between. I'm going to do that real quick now. I'm just going to go zipping along. If it ends up touching, it's okay. Remember, this is a drawing. It's a doodle. It's going to look pretty, and the creature that you're drawing never actually lived anyway. So if their little cells aren't shaped proper, you did not stop them from having a fulfilled life. <laughs> you're actually giving life to your imagination. Life to your imagination. How, how amazing is that? Doodling, creating something, putting it on paper, putting it on canvas, wherever your art takes you, you're bringing your imagination to life. You're allowing your brain a place to make its own choices. It's hard to talk while you're doing this. It's hard to communicate with others. So, I may babble a little bit. I'm not trying to be a babbler, but sometimes, sometimes I babble. And that's okay. It's just my brain making connections. It's making connections. Almost done with my little dark gray spots, except for the ones that are going in the centers. And I do want to sort of lightly color a few little shapes between the <laughs> between the flowers. Um, yeah, because they are like flowers. Some of these little open shapes, I just want to lay in a little deeper shadow. If you look at that, that is coming out really pretty. So now what I want to do is I want to grab my crimson, it's a D1, D1 crimson, and I'm going to lightly put some of that in. I want to make it smooth. I want to make it a little dark. That's why the crimson is there. And I'm going to take it around these little dark spots and I might take it little, little lines of it inside between the petals 
not covering up all of the color in the background. And I just realized I didn't get that gray into those centers. Thank you to everyone who was saying, hey, you forgot the centers. I appreciate you guys yelling that. It made me think of it. Okay, not really, because you haven't seen this yet. I'm not doing it live. But it's kind of fun to say it that way. Made you think of it. Think, stop and think for a second, eh? Stop and think for a second. Yeah, there we are. Just a little bit of that into the, down into the center. So there's going to be a little bit of the crimson that gets in there too. But we're just laying some of that color in and then going poop and giving it a dark, darker stripe between the petals. You want a sharp pencil for this part. Basically you're you're doing a just a, a flick of color between the petals. Just to add to that depth. You see how that's making it look even deeper. Even deeper. I'm really liking how this is turning out. Like I said, I did not do a sample with these colors. I sort of picked this out. I just found a pen, I found a flower that I forgot to do the, those little dots above the petals. There we go. I'm really liking how it's turning out. It's giving me a lot of heart. It's making me feel really good that I'm sharing with you a design that's going to work. <laughs> I do turn my card. I can't work on it in one position. My brain doesn't work that way. My hand doesn't work that way. And I do try to turn it so that you're going to see better what my pencil is doing. Again, if you look at this, I am not coloring in all of that base color that we put in. There's base color still showing in these flowers. And now I will go back and grab my gray and get these deeper color in on these petals that are closer to the center, that little deep line. Because again, I heard somebody out there saying, hold it, you missed something. It doesn't look quite the same. So we'll just get that real quick. And we're getting really close to being done on this particular this particular little gem. I'm trying to think if I, no, you know what? I think I'm going to take it and go to the orange instead for this middle part, getting the margins colored in a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah, that's much better. It needed a, it needed a spark of a different color makes the, the orange makes those little little dots in the center here show up a little bit more but again I am not coloring this in totally smooth I am not covering up all of that yellow that I put into the background I am going to take us a, a little bit of this orange into the centers. Look at that. Looks almost like almost like fireworks or something. I think I'm going to grab oh that's the black. I don't want black. Maybe I'll just grab the gray again. Maybe 
I won't. Maybe I'll just grab the yellow again. That's what I'll do. I just want to deepen up a couple spots of this yellow color. Just a little more. Now this is not a translucent stone. The light does not pass through it. It's a solid stone. So any reflections or any highlights are going to stay on the top and not shoot through the stone. So we're not going to have a, a little bright spot here and a glow down here because there's no place for it to glow. So you're just going to end up with your shiny highlights on the surface and maybe down around the edges just a little bit where it might catch. What I'm doing here is just taking this blue, this um, peacock blue, and I'm using it as my shadow color. And the reason for that is that over the yellow and orange, it will react differently. So in the yellow areas, it's going to turn greenish. And in the orange areas, it's going to go brownish. Now in the greenish areas, it's a little bit of a lighter shadow. In the brownish areas, it's a little bit darker shadow. And either way, it's pretty. And another trick that the first time I ever did this just made me happy that it, it accidentally happened. And now I try to do it on purpose. And what that was, was along one of the edges, ever so lightly, you leave the tiniest little bit of unshadowed stone. Just the tiniest little bit of unshadowed stone. And what that does is that's like a reflection from the metal bezel going back against the stone, shooting a little bit of light back. It's kind of exciting that things like that happen just by accident. And it just is a surface highlight, like I said. Now, I am going to take my Prismacolor White and do some not, I'm not going to burnish this stone completely, but around this flower up here, I'm going to do just a little bit of this white and burnish just a couple spots. And I will burnish down around that edge that's going a little bit away. Because what that does, it makes the stone feel more three-dimensional and even right down onto that shadowy bit that I did. I'm going to do just, I'm going to hit it in spots. I'm not, I'm not wiping out all of that shadow. I left a shadow line. I came down just a little bit to sort of burnish it out over one of those flower spots. And then I'm leaving the rest of this. Last step on the stone is going to be my highlight. What is the highlight? The highlight pretty much is just the reflection of the lights and the shape of the stone. So the reflection of the light and the shape of the stone. And there you've got it, that piece of coral. And now I like it in this black and white frame like this. So I don't think I'm going to actually color the frame. I am going to lay a little shadow down around this bit of the frame here and this frame here. Now there, there's spots still for more stones and I could go ahead and throw some stones in. I am, oh let's see, how long am I here? Uh, this is a 30 minute video already so I am going to just it may not be quite 30 minutes when I'm done because I will edit out a few of my ums and ahs. I'm just going to go ahead and throw 
a little drop shadow in here, a light shadow. Oh, sorry, the pencils keep rolling back on me. Stay on the other side. There you go. And just throw a little drop shadow on here. This is a square, so the drop shadow can be seen on two edges. I'm saying the light's coming from over here. Now, when the light comes from this side and it makes a drop shadow, it's got the, well, actually, it's sort of coming from this side here. It's got the highlight, and then it's got a shadow. And the only thing that I will do extra is I will, now that I've got that soft shadow in, is I will throw just a thin line of for a shadow right up against the edge so it looks like it's actually setting up. There we go. The stones in the centers, I will go ahead and, and color in and those are just going to be um, standard stones like the ones that I did in episode one. So you can check episode one out to find out how I color these other stones, the little tiny ones and these, but the rest of it is going to remain black and white. Thank you so much for staying with me, checking this out. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a little bit on how to make fossilized coral cabochon doodle gems. Thank you. Remember, click like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. And as always, go out and do something creative. We'll see you later.